On behalf of um, uh, FSO and I would say also Hutamaki in this place, uh, we would like to warmly welcome you to this uh, afternoon session. Uh, we are Friday afternoon and uh, we will be uh, completely thrilled and excited to share the journey of uh, André de Oliveira. Uh, we're very welcome, André, into, into our session here today, um, where we will listen to a very most exciting uh, story of how you can launch and successfully deploy a TPM program in the middle of everything that we are living today on our, in our pandemia world at this moment. Uh, I can promise you there will be some very, very interesting insights and um, uh, also from a personal perspective of Andre, uh, that uh, I think is maybe the most interesting. And uh, we will also, uh, I'm also very happy to have with us today, Carlo Baroncelli. Yeah, uh, I would like to, uh, for those of you who don't know Carlo, uh, I mean, there are not so, probably not so many, uh, but uh, Carlo is one of our founders and also uh, one of our gurus in, uh, in WCOM, so uh, has been also instrumental, of course, in this. And we will hear some words from Carlo as well. Uh, so on be once again, on behalf of EFESO and Utamaki, I can see many people are joining now. I would like to warmly welcome you to this session this afternoon. My name is Tobias, and I'm when I'm not doing this, I'm also a consultant with EFESO in the Nordic countries, where I'm the managing director, and I'm also uh, deeply involved together with Carlo to uh, support our clients worldwide in the forest and packaging industry and to uh, make them succeed. Uh, I suggest we start. Please, uh, if we can go ahead, um, I think Natalie is managing the slides. We will have uh, two short pieces today. Uh, first, a few minutes of introduction, and then we'll go straight into the, the story uh, from Andre. And then we'll finish off with a few minutes of Q&A at the end. Please, the next one, Natalie. So just a word, I would assume uh, some of you are familiar with FSO, but just to say who we are and why we're here uh, hosting this session today. Well, FSO is a consulting firm that has been around for over 40 years, and uh, we are present worldwide supporting our clients on their mission to, to success. And uh, we are present in over 30 countries with physical offices, and we work across all continents and all uh, countries uh, with the deployment of larger consulting programs. Next slide, please. Um, this slide, uh, I wanted to add it. Uh, it's a small step for mankind. I'm aware of that, but for us, it's been a very important uh, small piece. Uh, we have been for long climbing up the ladder of, um, uh, let's say, the consulting ranking in the world, and we're very happy to say, and proud also to say that we are now ranked on the top three list in the ALM Vanguard uh, report. And what I think is even more interesting and more important, at least from our point of view, is the fact that the bottom right, where we are ranked world leader on the, the management systems for operational consulting, in particular in manufacturing, which is the um, providing the lasting impact, which we all strive for to create a robust operation. Please, next slide, Natalie. Um, and I would like to say one word also about our presence in the forest and packaging industry. We are, we are extremely proud to support very many of the world leading companies in this industry, uh, all the way through the entire value chain. So spanning basically from the, uh, the root of the tree, the fiber, where it, where it, for that part of it, and all the way down through to the downstream uh, application and innovation. We are supporting all types of materials uh, from uh, wooden fiber all the way through to plastics, glass, uh, and also metal where needed. And um, I would say that uh, this industry is now standing in a very, very interesting position for the years to come. Um, it's not only for its own sake, but also because this industry touches upon so many other, uh, let's say, circular flows in our, in our industrial life from uh, in FMCG, in food, not at least, as we will hear a lot from Andre, but also all other sectors. So the responsibility of this industry is much bigger and reaching further out than just uh, for its own sake, let's put it this way. And we're extremely happy to be part of that journey uh, in the next coming years. With this, I would like to hand over to Carlo to say a few words to introduce also uh, the topic of today, the story from Andre, which will be our 
at our scene here as um, and what hair shall I miss gossip shall strive to mend us as Shakespeare would have said so please Carlo thank you uh, welcome everybody I mean we as you saw from uh, Tobias we are uh, present in several uh, uh, packaging companies in the world we have long history in, in packaging and uh, we from our perspective we have seen that uh, obviously the the, 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 pa the the packaging industry is growing uh, because of uh, several uh, forces and uh, then is facing uh, three major challenges one is uh, less impact in the ecosystem uh, especially for for uh, the, the plastic uh, the film uh, less cost in relation to the contained goods that are, uh, need to be more available to everybody and then uh, the relation between the, the, the packaging and the contained uh, goods is, is growing because I mean uh, uh, families are, are getting smaller so the, the portions are getting smaller uh, and access to low, low cost countries uh, for to package goods that uh, so far have not been uh, uh, have not been uh, so the food has not been protected uh, correctly. Um, TPM is is uh, probably I suppose everybody knows what is TPM total productive management uh, as methodology that has been developed uh, several years ago but then it has been spreading uh, uh, in 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 the in the world uh, especially in fast moving consumer goods um, is a is a perfect match to these challenges because uh, is a total war to losses. Uh, from one side is material waste, uh, improving uh, the use of material, improving the use of energy with, uh, with better use of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of OE uh, and also capacity with, uh, again, uh, better use of OE and, and uh, better, um, um, let's say, less capital uh, applied uh, to, uh, to, to, to what is needed to, to grow uh, and to serve more markets. Um, next, please. Uh, then uh, we are, uh, as consulting, we are we are alive and kicking. Luckily, uh, we were scared one year ago uh, because of uh, of uh, whether the the entire industry would have been surviving. Because our uh, motto was "Go to Gemba." Was uh, uh, we were uh, very much uh, um, convinced of the need. Uh, and still, in part, we are uh, of the essential need of being uh, in the in the in, in 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 at Gemba, so visiting the sites. But uh, then, in the last year, this has not been possible. So, we had very big challenges, right, in project management and governance of our projects. Uh, while um, uh, the training, uh, the execution, uh, and the audit uh, and follow up. So, in all the steps. Uh, this is not uh, really really possible. Okay, uh, so I will uh, give uh, give the message uh, to to now to to Andre that uh, will uh, will explain how to overcome all all these uh, all these difficulties. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning for those in the west. Good night or evening for those in the east. Uh, very nice to to be here with you and to share uh, a little bit of what we've been doing in 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 hutamaki in the past in the past months uh, i think that the the very justified question that you may you may ask yourself is are we mad to start tpm in a pandemic year uh, i am convinced uh, we are not and i will try in the coming minutes to to share with you a little bit this experience and, and, and the reasons why uh, I believe that uh, independently of where we we are and, and which moments we live, uh, there is always time for, for TPM. Next, please. Uh, a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm a very simple man. I think I can be, uh, I can be summarized in two photos. Um, I am Brazilian. Uh, soccer is my, is my, is my passion. Uh, I never managed to the levels of this national team of 82. Uh, the Italians will remember well what happened that, that year. Um, but still, soccer is, 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 is pretty much uh, something that I, that I love. Loved playing and love to watch today. I am married to Anna and proud father of Daniel and Victor. 
And currently we live in the beautiful Amsterdam. Um, after living in many countries, in many places, uh, I work at uh, really uh, since 2020, in, 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 since the um, uh, year 2000, in many different countries in, in the world. Um, my career started uh, almost 30 years ago in, in Pirelli Tires in Brazil, uh, where I got my first introduction to TPM. Um, I need to thank uh, Efezo, and, and it will always be a, a remark in my, in, my, in my career that I was taught by Efezo at Pirelli factories uh, at that time. Um, and we've been partnering along the way uh, on, on, on the different steps I had in, in, in Tetra Pak, another packaging material uh, company, and Ecolab, a chemical company, uh, more recently. So I joined Hutamaki uh, 15 months ago, and I would like to, for those who don't know, let you know a little bit about Hutamaki, what, what we do and, and where we are present. So next, please. One more. Good. So, uh, Hutamaki is a global player in food on the go and food on the shelf packaging solutions. We are serving customers through different channels, meaning QSR, food delivery, retail, FMCG. And our products offer convenience, they offer food safety, food availability, which are all very important attributes for the modern uh, consumers. The portfolio is based on three main technologies, which are food service packaging, molded fiber packaging, and also flex flexible packaging. Uh, next, please. With net sales of 3.3 billion euros in 2020, we are a truly global company with a solid Nordic heritage. Our presence is reaching consumers across the globe, from the West Coast on the US, up to, uh, to New Zealand. The company has delivered strong growth in recent years, building strong foundations for the future. Today, Hutamaki is present uh, in, in 36 countries. We have around eight manufacturing units and we employ over 18,000 employees, uh, which are our, our biggest asset. This is a result of 100 years of history, celebrated last year. And I don't need to tell you what year was 2020. It was indeed very, very special. Next, please. I will for sure try to spare you from all the statements on how on how 2020 was a disruptive year due to COVID. I believe that we all felt that on our skin. But for the packaging industry, this was not the only disruption, especially in you. But not only, sustainability legislation uh, has changed gears, has become tougher. Uh, Well-established consumption partner, patterns from, from, from consumers have changed. All these factors together created disruption, but also created opportunities. As Winston Churchill once said, there's, there is never uh, a good time to waste a good crisis. So, in line with Hutamaki's purpose to protect food, people and the planet, the 2030 strategy was rolled out. We used all the external challenges to propose a transformational agenda that will enable the company to seize opportunities and come out stronger in the post-COVID times. Next, please. We believe in protecting food, people and the planet. This is our vision brought to us here by our, our president and CEO, Charles Hobe. As the leader of Hutamaki, uh, Charles drives this transformational agenda and demonstrates an unconditional support to TPM. As, as we all know, TPM without top management support is uh, faded to failure. Uh, next, please. So, why to start TPM? Why we can, one can argue that Hutamaki's 2030 strategy uh, may lack of originality? Uh, I can highlight for you a few very minimal, meaningful points uh, on it. Number one, the vision to protect food, people and the planet 
is an absolute is in absolute alignment with the role of responsible packaging material companies. The ambition to be the first choice in sustainable packaging sets the bar very high. And it is not hard to make very concrete connections between TPM and the four main strategic directions. Uh, next, please. The immediate connection um, when we talk continuous improvement is cost reduction. We can indeed drive competitiveness by becoming more efficient and reducing costs, but this would be a little bit too restrictive. TPM also enables growth by allowing freed up money to be reinvested in the company, driving innovation, for example. Differently than many people still think, TPM is not about improving machines. TPM is about developing people, especially those people in the shop floor, so they can take care and improve the machines and the processes of the company. And before talking about recycling or reusing material waste, TPM talks about avoiding it. Clearly, a an, uh, an strong link with the sustainability agenda. So, why to start TPM? because it strongly supports the main strategic directions of the company for the years to come and supports the creation of a differentiated manufacturing culture where loss eradication is truly an everyday obsession. Next, please. Um, TPM also has a very strong and direct connection with Hutamak values of care, there, and deliver. We care about our people. TPM develops and inspires people, so they motivate themselves to walk the extra miles for excellence. If you can click the, please, the, 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 the photo on care. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to introduce you to Summit. Uh, he became the TPM manager in our Dubai plant after being black belt for a few years. He is one of the 555 people that received basic training uh, on TPM in the past year. You can see, and probably not so well, his photo in the bottom corner of the screen. Uh, a personal skill metric is what was developed for him, including methodological and leadership skills. In case of shop for people, we also include operational skills. By exposing competence and knowledge gaps, we can address them in a very controlled and planned way, allowing people to perform at their best. It becomes uh, clear for them what type of experiences they needed to develop to be ready for their future jobs, putting employees in control, not only of their skills, uh, but also of their careers. With this transparent and structured approach, we can take care and develop our people. So if you go back, please. Uh, we, we dare to target loss eradication. Actually, we need to support people to believe losses are not normal and can be avoided. Who doesn't know that operator that has lived with, with, with kilos and kilos of, of waste uh, for his entire life and he believes that is just the normal thing? And by eradicating losses systematically, we will deliver unprecedented results. TPM really changes the way we do business. And if you can click on the on the on the on the second page there, please. Not working. It seems it seems like we have a break of the link here um, for some reason, Andre. Okay, I don't so know, go, to slide, if so go, issue. go to slide 22, please. 22. I think you have to step out of the presentation, uh, Natalie, and go back, go to slide 22 directly. Ah, OK, of course, of course, it, 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 it's wrong because now we have all the other slides. So. I don't know which slide it would be anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, go down, go down, go down. Yes, this one. 
Perfect. So thank you, Nathan. We, we manage it. Uh, so if you if you remember, if you remember a, a summit, uh, the the guy I just presented. Uh, well, this is the result of the team he led as part of a certification of his training. He worked in a chronicle loss in his plant, his registration print, printing waste. Uh, in 20 weeks, they reduced 89% the amount of this defect, generating uh, almost 60,000 euros of savings. Uh, that was the plan. Uh, this may sound small, but when this is done hundreds of times in hundreds of problems across the globe for many years, we start talking big money. Uh, but in my opinion, this is not the highlight of the team. The highlight of the team is the demonstration that a problem, even a chronic one, can be eradicated. By the way, a quick update on this on this on this team uh, from from first quarter of this year. Uh, this team has achieved less than one problem per month, bringing the real savings up to 80,000 K, 80,000 euros. They are dealing with the anomalies and they personally promised me that they will reach zero because now they believe it's possible. So now, Natalie, we have to go back to where we were. So let's see if we can make that. Good, thank you. That's that. That's good. And, and why to start TPM now? Uh, why to do it in the middle of the craziest uh, year ever? Maybe the best answer to this question is another question. Why not? There will always be great reasons to postpone changes. Hotamaki decided that this was so important to us and too relevant for the business to be postponed. So we used the disruptions to learn how to do TPM without one of the most important things for those who practiced it for more than 25 years, which is the physical presence. So basically, 2020 was a great year of learning. We we really needed to relearn how to implement TPM under uh, extraordinary conditions. And I think that we were up to the challenge. Uh, next. Uh, to understand our starting point, we need a few words to explain the past. Putamaki had a very good foundation of continuous improvement based on Link Six Sigma tools. What we needed to do was to cover a few important gaps like the operator centric approach, uh, like the maintenance loops for holding the gains. And we needed to change from a few improvements generated by a few people to many smaller improvements generated by every single employee. This is our main goal and main challenge today. Next. To get things started, we have chosen, uh, I believe, a, a non standard approach. Instead of having the usual pilot plants, we decided for two different roles. The lighthouses that would be the real trailblazer for TPM. And the satellites that would learn, copy and paste from the lighthouses and. Continue to approach TPM at their own pace, having a head start to when they would become lighthouses. Uh, this was also, but not only driven by the fact that our access to the factories would be limited. We wanted to make sure that the geographical and technological proximity of satellites to the lighthouses would somehow enable synergies and would accelerate the deployment of TPM, while of course keeping consultancy costs at an affordable level. So from March 2020, we started seven lighthouses and 14 satellites across the globe from uh, North America, uh, down to Thailand. Uh, our ambition is to cover all manufacturing sites by 2023. How did we do it? And how did we overcome the obstacles? Let's talk about the main ones from now. Next, please. Before we start a new initiative, training to the site to start in the journey is a must. In the normal way, we would deploy consultants with ready to train training materials consolidated and proven uh, along the past years, and the task would be basically accomplished. This time, uh, this was not possible. Training materials and methods designed for presential training uh, needed to be adapted for a new reality. Together with the consultants, we had pretty much redesigned everything, 
it was interesting uh, process. It was very interesting uh, to learn how to do this since this was new also for the consultants. Us usually the consultants tell you uh, what can be done and what's the best way. In this case, we need to learn together. Uh, our objective was to maximize in the training process uh, the time in virtual conferences and allow the maximum possible uh, time for self-learning. So we designed this training process in three steps. Theory would be grouped into modules where we would combine presentations with webcasts. Uh, webcast is nothing more than uh, videos of a teacher explaining the slides embedded in the material, in the training material. So trainees would go through the models at their convenience uh, in the given time frame, of course, and they would answer tests and quizzes. Once successful in these tests, uh, they would pass to the next second step. The second step is the closest we get to presential training. Uh, that's the moment where a group of trainees meet virtually with the teacher of the module to discuss specific aspects and to get their questions answered. The last step was the real project where the learnings would have to be demonstrated. Projects last 12 to 20 weeks and were virtually coached in four toll gates. This is just amazing. Imagine a team of people executing something new that they learned remotely with only four checkpoints and checking and coaching moments. This dedication and trust demonstrated by the great majority of the teams, uh, it's something that I'm really proud today. Just a few interesting points. Uh, just like home office, I believe that online trainings are the new normal. There is no way back. Maybe there are not, they are not so pleasant or comfortable like the presential trainings, but they can be efficient. They have a much bigger reach and quality in general is not compromised. But they require structured skills organization and they require a very serious certification process based on real cases. We use the coaching sessions also to coach the coaches. Sessions always had one lead auditor and a co and a co-auditor and gradually the co-auditors started to take the lead in a controlled way again to guarantee quality. We did not get it right in, in the first attempt. So you can imagine that the first sessions were not that great. Uh, especially the webcasts, they require practice to record and slides need to be simpler than we, than we are used to. This has been a learning process for all of us. The main certainty is that uh, although we achieved satisfactory results so far, there is still a lot to do and there is still a lot to improve. We can go one further, please. Uh, the next step of, of the process after basic training was the official kickoffs and the formal communications uh, to all employees that TPM would start. Again, social distancing, borders closed, the restrictions all came into the way in a very important milestone of a TPM journey. Remember that also for local management uh, of the selected lighthouses, the journey and the required activities was still unclear. and they would be the ones that had to deliver uh, the message uh, to the shop floor, to the people of their, of their unit about the TPM uh, kickoff. So in a very disciplined way, but not so formal uh, as we did in the trainings, we started to pass to the local teams details of the journey. We started to put together the master plans and align messages for the town halls. We had the standard X provided to all factories to guide them. We had the standard roles. Each one knew what part to play and when to play their part. But the practical challenges, of course, were still ahead of us. In these photos, you can see examples of one kickoff uh, in, in the town hall, where mixed set of solutions were taken. People following from meeting rooms, from their workplace. A few people were following from home office and operators were attending uh, from the shop floor. At this point, flexibility was the name of the game. In a few sites, we did, uh, we did the kickoffs and the town halls in bigger warehouses with people sitting in, in, in very specific places. In others, this presence in the, of the shop floor was really not possible. So always with zero compromise to local health and safety regulations, 
we managed to kick off seven factories and and after those we managed to kick off uh, another five so if you move forward please um once we entered live in the tpm routines uh, we started to put in practice our plan to execute uh, teams and pillar audits remotely uh, objective was to be efficient in supporting the local teams but also to give everyone a higher feeling of presence and closeness. The idea was to start to use HoloLens for this task. This would allow us to leave the virtual rooms and enter virtually to the shop floor. It would allow auditors to see the machines and the proposed improvements live. Really, I cannot describe my happiness to be able to, to, to enter virtually in, in, in the first factory that we use that uh, after I believe six months of, of lockdown. It was really, it was really uh, impressive. Augmented reality hardware is an affordable reality today uh, and open doors for multiple, for multiple applications beyond just transmitting video uh, through Teams. This uh, so far had never been uh, considered accessible. So this broke some paradigmas that we had and allow us to have uh, new tools to use. Of course, this uh, use of, of, of virtual cameras and augmented reality requires practice. In the beginning, the level of curiosity of employees uh, may be a bit uh, destructive and it may cause a few problems. But as always, people get used to the new normal and suddenly everything becomes just routine. If we move one further, please. Um, I will quote a good friend of mine and a partner in our, in our implementation at this point. He once told me that the real big problem we face today with remote support is that all interactions are very formal. We set a time, we book a slot, we set an agenda, we make a connection, and then we hang up and disappear. So there is no time for informality. There are no small talks, no after dinner beer at the hotel, uh, there are not long hours in the plane together where normally you exchange impressions of the record opinions and you can really see your partners in their eyes. This is, uh, in my mind, the biggest limit uh, to soft communication and then to change management uh, as well. So if we take the old obstacles for TPM implementation, it became much more difficult to spot them. It is much more difficult to know what is really happening. And the level of impact is, of course, not the same. We can still reasonably say remotely if TPM strategy is not perfectly aligned with business strategy. But to smell doubts, to smell hesitation on management team, for example, becomes uh, almost impossible. Uh, unfortunately, this is not something that uh, normally people will open up to you via a Teams call. This would be something you would sense from informal questions during a dinner, for example. To overcome these difficulties, we need new set of glasses to spot old threats. Uh, one example of tool that we can uh, slightly adapt to, 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 to gather and to collect these things is, is the program governance, for example. Uh, what we are doing in Hutamaki today is nothing different in terms of structure. Uh, but we cannot afford inefficiencies and we need to capture those messages and signals that we would normally uh, only capture in informal relations. It has to be a fault proof governance. It start from accurate reporting from consultants from the floor. Uh, these reports, they need to be agreed in the local steering committees using standardized templates and processes. Often, TPM champions also attend these steering committees in order to avoid misinterpretation, misunderstandings. We are still setting the sensitivity uh, level for escalations of roadblocks. Um, usually, these escalations should happen only through uh, really exceptions, things that we never managed to, to solve locally. But uh, in order to access also less critical points and give a precise picture of difficulties and solutions to, to, to the local managements, we are setting this level a little bit lower. Uh, it has always been essential in, in any implementation to create a safe environment so that even more sensitive issues would not be hidden. 
in the current situation where we cannot sense these issues uh, anymore ourselves, this becomes even more important. We put in place systems that promote uh, a two-way communication in a stronger manner, like chat rooms in Teams, for example. This is actually very successful. For each channel, we have owners responsible to keep the communication flowing. We make sure our message gets to the factory shop floor, but mostly important, we make sure that the reactions and feedbacks reach us back. Currently, we are trying to be one step ahead uh, from, this, from, this, from these signals, and we are starting to co-create solutions with the lighthouses before implementation starts. It has been like this for the pillars implementation, for example. As we know, uh, in TPM, the watts are pretty much known, but the house differ in a significant manner, uh, depending on local culture, depending on the backgrounds, depending on the circumstances. And the COVID lockdown uh, and the difficulty to access factories impacted strongly many of the house that we, we were used, and this cannot be ignored. If we move one slide uh, further, please. Uh, what did we achieve in, in 15 months? Well, uh, I think that we can be quite proud of the tangible and intangible results that we that we that we have seen in this in this in the, in this past in this past months. So we managed to kick off 12 lighthouses and seven satellites. We have more than 80 Kaizen uh, teams concluded and half of them who were virtually coached. Uh, this generated relevant additional cash savings and also significant additional capacity in many sites. We delivered 84 training sessions online, reaching uh, more than 500 people. This is about the reach I told you that uh, on presential trainings we wouldn't have. We had 152 coaching sessions for Kaizen teams, and, and this is also a, a really big effort. Not to mention all the intangible results of teamwork, empowerment. Uh, we, had, we had the TPM managers uh, uh, really excited by telling us, wow, we found out new leaders in the shop floor that we never knew we had. A and this is what TPM is all about, is uh, unleash unleashing this capability in the shop floor that for many years uh, became uh, silent. Uh, next, please. Yeah, I am sure that we are we are long, long way to go in our journey. Um, I'm sure results will be great, but the journey can be difficult, especially considering uh, how we started. TPM is a one way journey. It's not easy, can be frustrating, takes us out of the comfort zone, requires resilience and above all trust. But it works. It changes the way we do business. It gives us the required edge in this competitive world we live and is all about cultural change, cultural evolution. So with this, I, I pause for a minute and I open the floor to you for your questions, for your comments or your reactions. Uh, let's let's use what we learned uh, in this difficult year and let's promote the two way communication. I spoke too much already. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, fascinating journey. Uh, I would uh, we have a question uh, that has also partly already been answered in the chat column, but uh, I would like to start off with a, a personal question from my side. Uh, to you, uh, as a, as being the you being the steward of this ship here. Well, if we look back now, we stand here now in April 2021, and uh, what you've just shown us here from from the journey and the uh, the main events that you have performed during this uh, during this uh, during this time. But what is different now, in your own reflection? to what was, let's say, February, March, one year ago. What has changed in your way of looking upon this way of tackling the, the, the issues that we saw coming when the pandemia struck and everything was locked down? What has changed for you personally in your, your perception of this? Uh, Tobias, as, 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 as I said, uh, we literally 
had to learn how to implement TPM from scratch. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it 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 has really been uh, tough to 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 be up to this challenge, uh, knowing that uh, those seventy five percent of traveling time that we normally have would go down to zero. And, and it, indeed, it went down to zero for over a year now. So so. I think that we have to count a lot on the creativity of the team and on the commitment of the team. Of course, if 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 the team, if the different lighthouses uh, didn't want to play the game, we would all have failed. So we create the conditions, we, we offer the tools, we, we make the proposals, but then uh, also the other part needs needs to play. I think that the, the the perfect alignment between TPM proposal and the business needs uh, is something that created this trust, and it's something that created this disalignment. So, some uh, very often when we when we propose something to a lighthouse, uh, instead of seeing us as an obstacle, they understand that they should seize this opportunity to help them to deliver their their stretch targets that all of them have so uh, i don't think that i don't think that i can i can i can name it as as a change but it's an enhancement of my con of how convinced i am that uh, tpm is a game that can only be successful if played for all parts top management support is of paramount uh, need and if we are all on the same boat, we will find solution for the obstacles, whatever they are. Fantastic. Uh, we I will then turn to a question here from um, uh, from Stephen Wigglesworth, um, and it's a question about the training. Uh, you said that um, the quality in the training approach was was not affected. Uh, can you elaborate something on on the measures here and how how we can measure that uh, in this let's say virtual delivery mode that we have on the training now? And uh, I also want to stress to you that Anna Karen has given a short comment also in the column here to that question. But please, Andre. That that that's a good question, Steve. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Uh, and this is not a judgmental uh, opinion on the quality of the question, but it's it's just connected to my personal preference of, of of education and training so i am i am absolutely uh, passionate about this topic and i'm really almost obsessed by making sure that the energy and efforts we spend in training are not wasted so uh, i what we are trying to, to implement in hutamaki is a very serious uh, process for uh, updating the skill matrix and making sure that we have a, a precise and accurate mapping of uh, how good and to what level people can perform uh, a certain set of skills and knowledge. So, so in the beginning, um, we, we we realized that that uh, in a few modules of the online training of the webcasts, we really didn't reach the expected level. For, for, for the trainees. And this is and this was uh, very little fault of the trainees. Uh, and very much fault of how we adapted the presential trainings to the online version. So it took us a few failure rounds. Uh, in TPM we, we we cannot we cannot spend too much time over designing things. We need to have an idea, we have to try and we have to interact and through loops get to to to, to a, 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 an acceptable level in the beginning and then polishing this continuously continuously ad infinitum. So so through this interaction we managed to correct to simplify the training material to find the right uh, language uh, on the webcast to design the tests and the quizzes in in in, in a better way. Um, we have a, a very strong uh, internal team that is taking care of that. Efezo is, is is supporting us greatly with a dedicated team to that as well. And and I think that, as I said, we are learning together. We've been learning a lot, and the learning curve is still not even 
<laughs> started. Thank, thank you for that. And um, spinning uh, further on this, uh, we have a question from Peter here, Peter Ridips. Uh, he would like you to, if you can elaborate a little bit more on, uh, let's say, the the issues that we saw and that we stumbled upon that you that you have encountered on the journey when it comes to the remote uh, the remote implementation, let's say, of this program. You have already elaborated a little bit on it. I think the question is about, uh, let's say, going a little bit deeper in the details, if possible, at this point, uh, and see what what were the you talked about these uh, loops of failure and then uh, up again and try again, which is also a core element of learning, by the way. Um, is there anything particular that you could share with uh, with the audience here and with Peter? Uh, listen, Peter, I think I think that I think that the the um, to go a little bit more in detail on that. I think that this virtual uh, journey um, increases a level of insecurity and increases level of anxiety for those who are far away. Because uh, we know that TPM happens on Gemba and we know that uh, access to Gemba is very difficult. So we need to get news and we need to learn things and we need to get updates through, uh, to, through people that are, are there. Uh, we have to confront different different versions, probably of the same story. Uh, it's not common that the versions are are different, but they are all right. So, so it is it is it is really it's really a process of of um, clarifying things and trying to be specific and trying to, to really get to the bottom of the story. Really trying to to create this this um, this confidence level with the local factories in order for them to tell you what are their problems, what are they feeling, uh, what are the obstacles that they are seeing. Uh, even if we have the governance process for that, things get uh, lost on the way. So uh, the way we are structured here. Uh, I believe it's a very smart way because TPM is a central function, but in every segment we have the TPM champions. These guys, they are uh, business people. They need that uh, everything we do deliver result. And they create a very important bond and a very important link um, with, the, with the, the factories. Because even if I tell everyone that we are on the same boat, and their success is my success. Uh, I don't have their 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 a bid uh, specific a bid targets, or I don't have their specific cost saving targets, which these 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 guys from the segments have. So so yes, we uh, the, the 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 virtual implementation gives us a little bit of anxiety and uncertainty. Uh, but again, this can only be fought back with method and and trust. And that's what we are practicing. And, and, and even further on this, uh, there's a question here, follow on question um, on the uh, basically uh, the aspect of digital applications and solutions and, uh, and aspects then of, of this remote work or, or virtual work model. How, how are the shop floor operators dealing with this, in your opinion? Um. Yeah, so the, 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 the first time we approached the team with, uh, with, with someone wearing a HoloLens, it was, really, it was really a big circus. Because <laughs> we basically stopped the factory. Everybody wanted to know what that astronaut was doing in okay. the factory. Okay. Right? So, so uh, I think that there is no difference from anything new that, 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 that we introduce. People get curious. People want to see what is it. A few people have more facility. A few people have more uh, are more afraid of, of, of new things, of technology in this case. Um, but um, besides this part of the of the virtual audit, I think that the life of the teams didn't change much, because great majority of the teams, great majority of the shop floor people continue to be audited by the TPM manager who is local. 
continue to be audited uh, by 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 local consultants that go to, to, to the factory and never stop it going because we we were very fortunate to 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 have um, to have local consultants in every place we had we had we had a, a, a TPM journey started. So so for the local guys, uh, I don't think that there has been a, a big a, a big systematic uh, difference in terms of technology. Uh, we provided some fun when 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 we have this 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 astronaut getting into their teams and 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 and, and they talk with this machine. Um, but uh, I don't see I don't see a major a major impact. So um, sometimes they are audited also via teams, uh, mm -hmm. but then they are always assisted by the local by the local by the local TPI manager. So I don't think that there has been a, a, a very strong technological disruption for the life of the operators uh, with this with this pandemic. Mm. And um, I will uh, I will uh, scroll a little bit in the among the questions here, and I will go to uh, we have we have time for some more questions if it's okay with you, Andre. And there's one here I'm from, okay. yeah, yeah. from Gabriel uh, Gabriel Mondragon. Uh, so. Uh, we have now used uh, you have now used the virtual training uh, and uh, you have reached uh, benefits uh, in this first year of, of uh, implementation and what, what is now the evolution of that what's happening uh, as a next step how do we keep up how do you keep up the momentum uh, of this what is the evolution of, of, of this that has started now with the virtual training um, with virtual training we 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 increase reach so we, we absolutely we cannot we cannot say that uh, training capability is an obstacle for us to 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 move forward um, like in every tpm uh, implementation the real challenge right now is to reach that critical mass that will consolidate tpm as a relevant culture so uh, I, I just shared with you, we have around 80, 80 Kaizen teams completed. Uh, probably we need 800, right? So we need to speed up this, we need to speed up this rollout. We need to, we need to open doors for more and more people to join uh, the, 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 the boat. Uh, we need to communicate to people more effectively that uh, TPM is great for the company, but it is in first place great for them personally. And 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 with this creation of critical mass, uh, not only the processes, not only the methods will get consolidated, but also the TPM culture will get consolidated. Because this, um, we are still in, on a very fragile phase. So TPM in the beginning is like a rubber wall. In order for the wall to move, you need to push. You need to push. You need to push. If you stop pushing, it comes back. So we are still on that on that step. We need to create critical mass. We need to involve more people. We need to involve more factories. We need to approach more losses. We need to expand the scope to 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 to, to other areas, in order to start creating uh, solid points on this wall, and and we reduce energy and things go a little bit downhill for a while. <laughs> OK, I love the rubber wall. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the way life is sometimes. How, how, how we have, I think we have time for one more live question here from the audience, and then uh, we will start rounding off. But I promise you we will answer to the other questions as well uh, in a written format or, or in some way. Uh, but uh, I. Uh, uh, I would I would like to to stay on uh, maybe here. Uh, I mean, uh, if we if we take uh, the question from um, uh, from uh, from uh, Stephen, I I know that maybe you don't have the numbers at the top of your head, but uh, we talk about this being more efficient and effective, and you you talk about a longer reach when it comes to virtual training. But uh, what is uh, in your opinion the the cost reduction? achieved from this approach uh, from, uh, from if we talk about some kind of business case compared to the regular training and uh, and also this distance gamba coaching versus you know 
versus uh, physical on-site uh, gamba as we have been used to for the last uh, three million years. Um, listen, listen, uh, Tobias. Um, once we reach a decent, uh, 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 a good enough level of quality of the training material and the training structure, uh, we can replicate that uh, continuously, right? Mm -hmm. So there is the the, the 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 money and time invested to design that to prepare it, um, but then we can continue to use that uh, a definitum if you want. Um, so if you consider that that uh, uh, a traditional PKE training would 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 take a week uh, of full time of one person. Um, I believe that I believe that with the virtual uh, system that we put in place, we reduce this uh, load considerably. Uh, I don't I don't have a, a, a return of investment calculation done, <laughs> um, but I can tell you uh, it's worth investing time in the beginning. Uh, I am sure. 100% I would not be able to train more than 500 people in a traditional manner. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, it, it's difficult to say that uh, the quality is one to one. Right. Um, as I said, uh, virtual training is not as. As comfortable or is not as pleasant as 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 a, a presential training and and this is my opinion and a few feedbacks that i that i heard from 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 a few of our guys um but i'm quite sure we can get used as well so the new generations probably will never know what a presential training is <laughs> okay and then well, they cannot compare <laughs> so very interesting is, yeah we're, we're coming towards the end here so uh, in order to close this on the right uh, bow i would like to ask you uh, one final question and a very important one, and that is who uh, is your favorite player from the Brazil 1982 team? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's an easy one. Paul Cow number five is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, unfor unfortunately, Paulo Rossi proved him wrong, so it is, it is, it is a difficult chapter of yeah. of the soccer quite, history quite some characters in that team you know with uh, Socrates oh, yeah. and, and uh, all these guys all right with that our time is up and uh, i would like to send a very warm thank you from all of us andre uh, that has been listening to you and taking part of your journey and uh, also to carlo and on behalf of ifis i would like to thank everybody for for joining this it will also be posted online so, um, uh, and I would like to thank everybody who was involved in this, preparing this, Jean-Paul, and not at least, Nathalie. And uh, I, there is a lot of work behind all this, as everybody knows. So, uh, but uh, first of all and foremost, thank you to you, Andre, for a very fascinating journey that continues into the fascinating... I thank you. I, yeah, I, th I thank everybody from Efezo for the partnership. I thank <laughs> all, the, all the audience for the patience with me. <laughs> and 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 main and foremost, I thank uh, our team in Hutamaki that made this story possible. Uh, without without their effort and their commitment and their trust, uh, this story wouldn't have started. Fantastic! Thank you, everybody. everybody. Obrigado, Andre. Thank you very Cheers. much. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. Obrigado, Ciao. Thank you. Super interesting. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye.